Hey guys, Michael the Comic Nerd here again. Uh, here to give you another vlog review of the new movie that just came out, Frankenweenie. Now, I know I've been doing a lot of vlog reviews right now, <clears throat> and I've been meaning to, I've been trying really hard to get an actual review out there. Unfortunately, especially right now, things have gotten really complicated really fast, and I'm just so incredibly busy. I just, I have no fucking time. I just, I'm trying, but life comes first. Uh, but I did need a break, so I decided to go out of the movies today and go see Frankenweenie, which is essentially a big break that I needed out of the week I've had. <clears throat> but uh, I really want to see this movie because I've been a big Tim Burton fan for a long time. I haven't seen all of his movies, but I've seen a fair amount uh, t to know that there's a lot about him that I like. I like, of course, it, I just like his real. I really enjoy his unique style. Let me put it that way. His gothic unique style, and there like for majority of the time. I say majority of the time, uh, when it's real, when it's good, it's really good. Like it's really creative, it's imaginative, it's uh, it's just great. I don't want to get too much into that. That don't want to get too much of a topic. Like Ed Wood still ranks as one of my all-time favorite movies, and of course you got that. You got of course the original Batman. Um, not Planet of the Apes. Planet of the Apes sucked, and uh, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Okay, so yeah, he's made some stinkers, but you got Batman. You got Batman Returns, which is. I don't think it was that bad. It was weird, but it wasn't that bad. Uh, you got Edward Scissorhands, of course. That's a classic. Uh, I have a list next to me that I'm using to remember because I tried filming this before and I completely forgot for some reason. Uh, oh, yes, of course, like movies like Sweeney Todd. And I, re I actually really like Corpse Bride. It's not one of the better known ones, but I actually really like that one. Uh, Dark Shadows, I didn't even bother to go see. But uh, for me, I've seen more good movies from him than bad ones, and I've, uh, especially lately, after Alice in Wonderland came out and I saw that piece of crap in theaters, I was just really, was like, oh, he can do so much better than this. Oh, and of course, uh, Nightmare Before Christmas, even though he didn't really direct that one, but he still gets all the credit for some reason. Um, yeah, back to what I was saying. Uh, I was just really hoping for a return form, because you had Alice in Wonderland, you got the year after that, like a couple years after that, you got Dark Shadows, and just like, Crap, crap, and then was like, just give me a good one. And then Frank and Wee came out, and I fucking love this movie. I mean, this thing was fuck it. This is fantastic. This is, and this, this is everything I love about just Tim Burton and pretty much movies in general. It's like right up my alley of everything that I enjoy in, <laughs> in movies, essentially. Well, movies that are not drama, but that's a whole other thing. Uh, where do I even begin with this? Um, okay, for those who don't know, uh, this movie is based on the 1984 short film he made about the same name that was uh, also, I think it was under the Disney roof. Yeah, yeah, that's back when he was still working on that company. Uh, he made this short, and I guess he wanted to expand it, but I guess during because of the dark, the kind of grim premise of it, Disney kind of said no. But after, apparently after Alice in Wonderland, they said, fuck it, do whatever the hell you want. So they let him do a claymation version of Frank and Weenie. Uh, and it's fucking fantastic. <laughs> uh, this is probably the most fun I have had seen a movie in theaters since The Avengers, I think. If not more so. Like, I real I enjoy the movie that much. I I think this movie may have been a be better than The Avengers, although it's kind of hard to compare the two since, quite frankly, they are so incredibly different. Uh, so, where do I go, go with this? Um... As I'm sure most of you, I guess I'm going to loop into the story, as I'm sure most of you pretty much know already, but I might as well go over it now. Uh, spoilers warned, as usual. So, if you don't want to spoil it, you still haven't, or you haven't seen it yet, stop now, go see it. Fantastic movie. Okay, now for the rest of you that are still here, let's, con let's keep going. The movie basically surrounds, of course, uh, a kid named Victor. Is it Victor? I want to say Victor. I'm going to assume yes and move on. So, it's about this kid and this dark dog Sparky, and of course, at some point in the course of the day, the dog dies. And of course, he, he being apparently a scientific genius, finds a way to constitute him back to life, Frankenstein-wise. And that's pretty much the basic story, the premise, uh, basic premise, and everything kind of escalates from there. Now, what makes this movie brilliant is, uh, well, maybe brilliant's a harsh word, but you know what I mean. Uh, what makes, what I really love is, is the, it's very cleverly done, like, for starters, I'm trying to find my words. Okay. For starters, the script is very well written. It gets to the point, except a little bit towards the end, but truth be told, I kind of had to go to the bathroom towards the end, so I may have missed a thing or two. 
Uh, the side characters are hilarious. Like, every one of them is fucking hilarious. Uh, the main characters are, ver are very interesting, well-rounded, and likable. Uh, the dog itself is incredibly well animated, and you pretty much love the dog as much as you love the rest of the people. And I'm gonna reiterate this again because it it's half what makes me the main the side characters are fucking hilarious. Like uh, <laughs> there's just one girl in the movie. I don't even know if she has a name. Uh, but the majority of the characters are pretty much stereotypes of like horror movie characters. Uh, but the one that really got me laugh, every time she's on screen, I just started busting up, because it's just so fucking hilarious. But this girl was like, had this huge saucer eyes, so basically their eyes were bigger than the rest of her face, and a big grimace, like a big grimace, so she like, never smiled, she always had this face. For the whole movie, and she has a cat, that does exactly the same thing. So she see her with this, and the cat's down here, and I'm, <laughs> and, it's hard to describe, but just, it's fucking hilarious, they don't even say anything, they just come to those big cold dead eyes and for some reason it's, it just it gets me every single time and she reads like she believes that the cat like sends psychic signals through his poop which is a bit weird and a bit kind of ew but it's like <laughs> it was it was quirky it's didn't burn him to go with it uh, oddly enough uh the parents are also really likable in this movie too uh but there's one part in the beginning uh where the parents are talking, and the dad, I guess, is concerned because his uh, the son always spends the time up in the in the attic working on scientific experiments, and he goes like stuff like, that. "I just don't want to grow up weird. I want to be normal and stuff like that." And he goes, the "Mother just goes, uh, oh, he's not weird. He's just in his own wor little world." First off, my parents have probably had that exact same discussion at some point. And number two, in like the very next scene, you see him in his class, in the class with all his friends. He's the most normal kid in that fucking class. Like, I don't know what they're worried about. Everyone else is the fucking weirdos. Like, he had the guy who's, uh, what's his fucking, uh, it's like, he's basically, he's supposed to be Igor, essentially. Like, he has the big hunchback, his arms are bunched up, like, bunched up like Richard III, and he talks kind of like this, it's... What the fuck? Uh, oh, yeah, his name is Edgar. Edgar E. Gore. Yes, you see what they did there. But, uh, voiced by Charlie Tehan. Tehan? No, no, it's a... Atticus Shafter. I'm looking at the IMDB page on the other side. Um, but they're just fucking... <laughs> oh, it makes me laugh just thinking about it, because it just... It... Sorry, this is like the happiest I've been all week. Uh, yeah, it just it's just very clever. There's a tons of nods, like old horror movies and stuff anywhere, everywhere. There's a few jokes that I almost missed. Like there's one really clever one. Like uh, eventually, of course, they build up to when the dog dies. The dog doesn't die because like they actually get a little bit attached to the dog before it actually dies. The kid, like a couple of little kids, like a few seats for me, just started crying as soon as the dog died the first time. I'm not spoiling anything. You, should know by the fucking trailers, or even the fucking poster, or the fucking name. I gotta stop saying fucking. Okay. So, the little kid starts bawling. Hell, I was kind of bawling a little. No, no I didn't cry, but it's like, oh, that's kind of sad. Because, like, if anyone has had a dog, has been through that before, or something similar, and it's and it's heartbreaking. I mean, I'm a dog person, I admit it. Uh, and I'm a sap. Fuck it, I admit that too. Uh, <laughs> I try not to be, but it always seems to pop up. But where was I going with this? Ah, yes. So uh, eventually, the kid uh, has to dig up the dog from this grave and this like his pet graveyard. Just go figure which town has that. And uh, he starts digging this up, and you, it flashes over to a uh, grave that just says. Uh, Goodbye, kitty, with the, like the Hello Kitty face with the X crossed out, and it took me a few seconds. Like, what is it? Oh, well, that's kind of dark. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's like this is a Disney movie with grave robbing, so I thought that was kind. Of, well, not really grave robbing, grave. Eh, whatever, whatever the hell it's called. Uh, stuff that's kind of taboo. So like a little surprise this movie got made, but again, after he made some other Alice in Wonderland, I guess he can do whatever the hell he wants now. I apologize if I'm rambling more than I usually do. I'm just finally getting back into film brain even after 
being exposed to science brain for so long. My brain is just beyond fried at this point. Uh, but enough bitching and moaning. Back to the movie. Uh, and there, of course, and there's more side characters than the weird girl and the Edgar character. There's also like uh, the stereotypical Asian kid. Uh, and the oh, and that reminds me, like the whole thing, like the whole plot that that ties all these kids together is that they all want to win the like the science fair or whatever just coming up. Which was originally being hosted by this really scary looking Russian teacher, but I'll talk get to him in a minute. Because I love this character. But uh Right. So like there's a fat kid, there's an Asian kid, there's another kid, I don't know what ethnicity he's supposed to be, but he's like he's got like the tall, like the broad shoulders, but like the thin body. He looks almost kinda like the uh the critic from Ratatouille. Kind of, but it's fucking hilarious. All of all of them got a laugh out of me. It was fucking great. There was a scene where uh, the fat kid and the Asian kid like are partners for the uh, science project, and uh, what they do is they have a make. The fat kid has to put like a makeshift uh, jetpack mixed with like uh, soda liter bottles that are mixed up. But I can only assume it's rock, like uh, pop rocks or something. And, uh, he's, they're on the roof, and he's, the Asian kid is hiding behind the chimney. And uh, the kid's like, uh, is like, are you sure this is safe? And the kid's like, no, that's why it's experiment. And the kid actually talks like that. It's a, it's a bit racist, but I'm willing to go with it. So it's like, lines like that, like, really just start cracking me up. Oh! And while we're on that topic, uh, there's one line, like, two-thirds of the movie that I just started busting up laughing so hard. Uh, I'm probably not going to do as well as they did, but it's like, uh, eventually, of course, the parents do find out that the son brought the dog back to life. And, uh, the son's, the son's like, trying to just find, like, well, you said if you, if you'd do anything to bring him back if you could. And the dad is like, yes, but that was different. We know, we, we knew we couldn't do that. It's, <laughs> it's easy to make promises about the impossible. And I was like, oh my god, that's fucking hilarious. Uh, again, I think it's much funnier than the movie. I don't know, it just struck me as really funny. But, uh, one of the best characters in this, uh, fucking movie is, uh, the teacher, which is named Mr. Razru... Uh, Ra Ra something Russian. Um, <laughs> but he also kind of has the build, like the, uh, like the critic from... Uh, Rad too, where he's like tall and slender, but he has this huge long jaw, which is always kind of grimace like this. And he talks with a thick Russian accent, and he gets really angry. <laughs> he talk, he talks like a, a Russian immigrant. Like he starts talking about lightning on the board, and he goes, "And the lightning wants to come down to the land of opportunity, but this man he is in the way, so we must get rid of the man." And he talks just like that. It's a fucking genius. Uh, I keep you saying fucking. I really gotta stop. <laughs> I'm really, just, I'm really enthusiastic about this one. I really gotta see a movie I hate. Like I talk about, like I don't think I've seen a movie I have made a vlog video about that I didn't hate, that I didn't like. I really just gotta have someone drag me to a horrible movie so I can rant about it for twenty minutes. But uh, anyway, back to this. So they're ta they're talking about that, and uh, two thirds of the way movie, the movie after the jetpack incident I mentioned, the kid falls and like breaks his arm, and the the uh, parent uh, immediately immediately basically blames the teacher for it for encouraging science and uh it's it, it's only the real part of social commentary i think and make the movie makes but it's a good one where uh pretty much like all the parents don't know shit about science so they're automatically blaming the teacher for filling our head our our children's ideas uh children's minds with ideas and science and oh and this extremist view on the thing and the t <laughs> And it's like, well, can't the teacher justify himself? The teacher comes up and he goes, uh, he gets up and he's like, ladies and gentlemen, you do not under like, you do not understand this because you are ignorant. Did I say ignorant? I mean you are stupid. It's like, I was just gonna, like, oh my god. <laughs> is, Tim, is Tim Burton calling everyone stupid? <laughs> the over, ex the extremist parents that blame all their problems on the teachers or whoever is in charge of these things, even though really it's the own child's damn fault. I was like, yes, thank you. 
It won't even be better if someone sued somebody. Uh, probably the more realistic version. Where was I going with this? Oh, yeah. Um, see, I really enjoyed that character, and uh, the, the, I thought for sure, pretty much going right in the movie, like, there's, there's the mayor of the town, and the town is called New Holland, by the way. And I, I mentioned this because they have what is called a Dutch Day, which I guess is very important for the mayor. But the mayor is also like the stereotypically evil mayor, where kind of this, he's huge and he's bald and he has the like grimace like this, and he he literally talks like fuck like he's Satan, pretty much. <laughs> like your dog has been in my tulips. No, I, I take it back. His eyes are wider, like. Your dogs have been in my tulips. I saw him wanting to pee on my flamingo. It's... <laughs> it's stuff like that. I don't know. It just... It was lighthearted enough, but I could still take it seriously enough. But, I'm like, you're worried... <laughs> Back to the parents, like, you're worried about the kid? The kid's gonna be fine. Have you seen the other people in this fucking town? But, uh... The main, like, core of the movie is, or at least the uh, drive keeps moving going forward, is, like, after uh, Victor figures out how to do this, everyone, like, uh, the Igor kid finds out and basically rats him out to everyone. So everyone starts bringing animals back to life, but they don't do it the right way, so they keep coming up monstrously and hilariously deformed with making a nice little reference around the lay, like, uh... The fat kid uh, dumps a bunch of sea monkeys in a pool and then lights that on fire and they come out like giant gremlins, essentially. It has to be a gremlins reference. They're making almost the exact same noises, uh, which is really clever. They had, there was a turtle. Uh, there's been, there's actually been a bit of a joke about the turtle, whereas like the, the funky kid uh, who looks like the critic from Ratatouille uh, gets in a rivalry with the Russian, the Asian kid, not Russian kid, uh, the Asian kid. And he goes into the pet graveyard, and he digs up a pet called Colossi. And the, uh, that Asian kid just gets a little turtle named Shelly. And, uh, the big, the big joke is that in the tomb, instead of actually being, like, a huge giant monster you expect it to be, it's really just a little mummified hamster. Which, on its own, was, was hilarious, because just something like, with one arm, it's like, <laughs> And, uh, the turtle turns into goddamn Gamera. And if you know who Gamera is, without Googling it, I'm impressed. Basically, uh, turns into a giant monster turtle that goes on and starts wrecking up the city. <laughs> um, and, uh, that creepy, the weird girl with the, that girl, uh, tries to do with the bat, but the cat grabs it. And, uh, as the electricity's going through, and the cat transforms into this evil cat-bat hybrid thing. And that basically becomes the villain of the movie. I wouldn't really say this movie has a villain, necessarily, but, uh... If there was, I guess that'd probably be it. Um... Uh, but, yeah, I'm, I haven't talked much about the dog. The dog, like I said before, is, is really likable. Uh, there's actually more of a romance with the dog than there are with the people. They kind of hint at it with this gr uh, girl named Elsa Van Helsing, but I think the two characters have... Like, her and Victor only have, like, two talking scenes with each other, so it's not really that emphasized. Um, but, yeah, the, the more there's actually more romance with the dog and the Elsa's dog, which is the poodle. And there's a scene where, like, uh, they touch noses from, like, an electric shock sends, like, the bride of uh, Frankenstein uh, white streak through the poodle's hair and stuff like that. There's a lot of clever references in here. I think there's even a... Uh, a Caroline reference very early on in the movie where you see like the, not Caroline Coraline where you see like the cat from Coraline like in the graveyard that hisses at the victor and then runs off you never see it again so I'm only assuming that's a Coraline reference and of course you got the Gremlin reference the Gamma reference I'm sure there's plenty of references I missed because I'm not too much into the 50s horror movies uh, and of course people's names but that's a whole other thing um uh... Is there anything else? Oh, one more thing. One more thing. Uh, back to the Russian guy. Is uh, there is a big heavy theme about like the consequences of science or something like that? Like it, is, it does take a fair amount about the art of science itself, and it is an art to an extent. Uh, but there's one kind of scene that, on one hand, I really liked. On the other hand, I kind of called BS on. Where like after the if, after the whole press conference, where the parents get mad at the teacher, the teacher for 
fairly obvious reason because it's kicked out. But before he leaves, Anna's talking to Victor about, like, uh, the nature of science. Like, if you, like, uh, what happens in the movie is Victor does the experiment on Sparky and brings him back to life, but he tries that, like, on another animal because the Igor King makes him and it, it doesn't work, it doesn't work as well. Like, the animal disappears after a certain period of time. So I was like, well, why didn't it work the second time? Well, it's like, it's like, well, did you love your first experiment? Yes. Did you like the second experiment? No. Well, then you changed the variables. And on one hand, my brain was like, well, okay, I kind of like that. I mean, like, if, you, if you're in love with your experiment, you're much more likely to put your passion into it. You're much more likely like, to really try to make it work. But there's that logical part of my brain that's going, um, doesn't quite work that way, Mr. Russian. <laughs> like, uh... An experiment is an experiment. It should be able to repeat the... If you repeat the circumstance, it should be able to recreate the results no matter what the feeling about it is, I guess. The Loving your experiment just means you're going to put more effort into it. So, yeah. Um, I can't really think much more to say in this movie. Uh, third act, I... I, th I thought third act was pretty good. Uh, I had to go to the bathroom a little bit into this. I missed a little bit, but it does end like much in the way the original Frankenstein or story ends, except the evil bat cat versus the uh, Sparky the dog like fight out in a flaming lighthouse, and the cat has a surprisingly gruesome death for Disney. Like uh, it has like the whole sp the wooden spike comes down and stabs through the cat. You do obviously don't see this the thing going through, but you do see it just hanging there on the wooden spike, like, goes all the way through, it's like, this is Disney, right? And then, of course, it ends where, like, they kind of fake you out with the death, with the death of the dog, as it, a lot of Disney movies do, where, like, you think the dog is dead, and they try to bring it back by connecting all the dog, uh, the cars, jet engines together, and, of course, like, oh, no, it didn't work, but no, it actually did do the work, and then they... The uh, Sparky and the Poodle get together and they rub noses and that's how the movie ends. And all I can think of with my dirty brain is I want to see the deleted scene, <laughs> the extended ending, where the two dogs start humping and the penis falls off. But uh, that's me, my horrible <laughs> child-ruining brain. Scarred children for life. Um, but yeah, I think I've talked about this movie way more than I probably should have, so I'm going to stop here. Um, uh, I've probably said everything there is to know about the movie, but you should still, I still highly recommend seeing it. It is a great movie. I had a lot of fun with it. Uh, I don't think you can go wrong with it, so check it out.